Hello everybody, welcome back to part three. If you're new to this video series, what we've been doing is creating a box that's in the style of a tire. If we look here, we move it down, we can see we've got ourselves a lovely box. In the previous two episodes, we've been modeling this box. We're gonna learn how to tidy up this model and what we can do to export it in the most efficient manners. So shall we get started? Right then, where we left off in the last episode was we'd created all our objects and the last thing we needed to do was with these two objects, if we look, we can see that they're both level, aren't they? So we've got no way of guiding this lid into this base. So we need to create like a flange on this lid that's gonna poke into this base don't we it's a lovely simple task so by now if you've been following along you should be getting a hang of modeling if we question mark into the lid and press tab go into edit mode we can see we've got this flange if we turn on our shade mode if we press three for faces and alt to select this edge here we can see we've got this edge and we need to make a flange don't we so what we can do is press ctrl r and then use the middle mouse button to scroll up for two verts like that. What we can do is create a portion, shall we say. It's like one third of that area, which probably will be about a mil in the end. We could even go as far as going two if we wanted. We could, let's make it chunky. So if we press X, dissolve those edges. We want this one, don't we? So if we press three for faces, alt select them. We need to basically extrude that down, don't we? But before that, we should always consider doing the mean crease. So if we just whack that one up there and select this area, we need to extrude this down, don't we? We probably need to do it like two or three mil. So if we press E to extrude and it's automatically selecting Z, we can go one, two, three for three millimeters into the next object, can't we? We've got our mean creases already on because we did it first and we probably should taper that slightly, shouldn't we? So if we Press two and select the outside rim. What we can do is look on the bottom and we can just ever so slightly scale it in. Like that. So it's got like kind of a plug, a plug like we'll be able to squeeze it in and it'll grip itself, you know what I mean? So now we've got our flange, we can press question mark and back out. And what we need to do is back out with tab into object mode. And with this base, what we need to do is basically bolean that top into the base, don't we? If you've followed the previous videos, you'll be like, oh yeah, boleans, we know. So we need a boleen that's going to boleen the lid, don't we? So tie a top. So if we now select this one and press question mark to check, we can see we've got this little lovely cut out flange, aren't we? Perfect, absolutely perfect. Now the final steps we need to do before we do anything is check everything. So if we press tab and we come in here, we can see we don't have a crispy edge on here, don't we? You may tell I've done this before. <laughs> so if we whack up the mean crease and we inspect everything else, like we don't need it on the outside, do we? Because it's, it's, it's fine. So if we back out, that's good. And we also need to inspect our subdivisions here, don't we? We need to make sure we've got three levels of subdivision on each, each of our items. If we press question mark so we can see the top one. That has three, the rim, that has three, caliper. The caliper doesn't need it because it's already been applied. If we go into it, log, it's already detailed. And the brake disc, this one's also got three. Now what we can do now is basically max subdivision three. There is no way around this. We're going to have to sit and wait. It's going to take a long time. I think it takes like five minutes for me. There we go. That wasn't too bad, probably two or three minutes. So now we have our subdivided mesh. Whenever we try and do something to it, it will try and kill your computer in subdivision level three. All we can do really is now export. So in order to export our model, I'll show you this first. We need to export an STL file. It's a stereolithographic object. <clears throat> and basically it's what the program that slices up your models to 3D print needs it in to understand, yeah? So what we can do is click STL. Notice that at the minute, I've only got my brake selected as well, yeah? My brake disc. So what we need to do is create a folder called STL and separate them. And we need to save each individual one of these items as their own STL. And when you do this, you make sure that you select selection only so that you can do one at a time. There is shortcuts to doing it, but this is like the core principle of how to do it. And I always leave the scale at zero because we're, we're working in correct scaling, you know what I mean? So. Well, don't mess with it. It should be correct, but it usually isn't. <laughs> it doesn't matter. And then you click export, wheelbox two, we'll let it do that just to show you. And it will basically export just that single frame and you do that for every single one. At that point, you're then ready to open up your slicer program and start 
printing. But there's probably one more thing I'd like to show you, how we can speed up this computer killing subdivision. It's very frustrating. Because say like you've made a model and you're happy with it, everything's groovy, you can save out another file like we just did. And what we want to do is say, take a reference shot or we want to make a small movie animation. You know what I mean? Just showcasing our products. But if we was to like render out using all these boleans, it would absolutely obliterate your PC. It just wouldn't want to do it. You know what I mean? So in order to finally say like this model, we're completely happy with it. We can now go into each individual's object subdivision and we can basically just click apply so that when we turn the subdivision back to zero, it will actually work, you know what I mean? So we go around, we'll apply all the subdivisions. So we've got a brake caliper that doesn't need doing, we've got the lid, we're gonna apply this. Might take a long time, but sit tight. I want the circle of death. It's the circle of death. But this is why we're doing it, to like end this misery. Yeah, that's that one done, and we just need to do the bottom as well. Sit tight. And there we go. We also need to consider that we have bowlines that also have subdivision on, don't we, in our balls folder. So we need to also apply the subdivisions on all of these items as well. So with them unvisible, we can still select them and apply the subdivisions. Just go down, making sure they're all on three. That one doesn't need one, and these last two, and the last one. Once you've applied every single subdivision that's on your model, you can then consider going around and applying all the boleans as well. Say like this one, there's three. We start at the top one and we just keep going and press apply. Idea is, is to get every single modifier turned off, not being used so as to lighten the load on our computer. So we can take product shots and animation, and then do the next one in line. And then the final one, you'll notice your computer is starting to like speed up now. And if we do it on the bottom one as well, it's so these two are the ones that are really like killing the computer. And finally, just the brake disc, that little hole in the middle, apply that. There we go, lovely and quick. So now we can see, if you look here, this arrow here means um, it's got a modifier on it, you know what I mean? This boleen is in red, so it's not even doing anything. So we can delete that one. And this break disc one, I do believe it's to do with the rims ball and it never needed it anyway. So if we delete it, but also inspect, make sure we've not done any damage. So if we hide that and hide that, we can see it's absolutely perfect. That's how we want it into it. So basically this should be ready for print now. Now there's a bit of visual like oddities there, but I do believe it should be okay when it comes to printing kind of thing. But basically those oddities don't matter anyway, because this is for product photos and you can't even see that bit anyway. It's all about the top bits that are all presentable anyway. If we go to our shader now, we can basically see uh, this should be a lovely light model now you could, you could go as far as deleting all this stuff like with your delete hierarchy saving that folder out and it'd be nice and light then you know what i mean and you've got something you can use for taking photos and stuff and it'll render dead quick if we just add camera press shift alt and zero so you can see it and if we go into our view tool and click camera to our mouse we can basically put it in the middle press f12 and we should find it renders like instantly. Obviously we've got some oddities that that's to do with the seal. Oh, that one's not clicked on. Same with that one. That one's not clicked on. But it renders in one second. If you had all those boleans on, that would have taken you like an infinite amount of time. It'd just take forever. But yeah, and that's how you can basically, when you finish, break down your model so that your computer won't want to kill itself, yeah? So now we've exported all these models as well, we can basically finally yay, look at 3D printing. So if we open our slicer, I'm using the Harlot box, which is what you get free with this printer, you know what I mean? It's all, all you need really. All we need to do is slice it and tell it what kind of resin we're using. This is all this program does. It's very basic. You get some 3D tools on it. I'll explain them when when we use it, but this is your first button. We need to open up all these things, don't we? This one here was an example, so we're gonna delete that. And you've got yourself, or you should have, the top, bottom, the brake, the caliper, and the brim. If we select them all like this, we can basically press open and it'll bring them in. The first thing we're gonna to have to deal with is the scale. With this, I'd just like to press okay, just let it, just get them in there. Ah. And what we can do is basically we can move the item. If you click on this one here, look, and then hold over the, the arrows, you can tidy them up like this. So the first thing I like to do is organize them so they're all not on top of each other, basically. Move this one over here like that. And then what we need to do is click the largest item. 
which is this one. And then we need to go over to the scale button. And if we look, it's basically 150 millimeters wide. What we need to do is confirm that this is the same size we're working with. It's not integral with this box item, but it's something you need to know because if you are working to measurement critical things, you need to know it. So then we can click on if I make it visible, if we click on this bottom piece here, well, we can basically come over to our item and inspect its size. And on here, it's saying it's 125 millimeters wide. So it's obviously incorrect, you know what I mean? And it's always important to check these things, you know what I mean? Double cross-reference them. Sometimes they come in in the bang on kind of thing, but always check them, you know what I mean? And then what you can do is go around and select them using control, like this, like that, that one. And make sure the last one you click is the one you want to change, which is the biggest one. We can basically come in here and press reset. I always say reset because it'll take it back to its original scale. And then we press 115 for millimeters. It'll rescale everything bang on and correct, basically. You know what I mean? And it's a little bit smaller, so it's going to save us some resin. You know what I mean? So moving on from that, then, what we can do is prepare these models for print. Now, I'm gonna show you an example with these ones. We need to quickly arrange them. If we click that one, then we rotate the Z. Uh-oh, I'll just make it skinnier. We bring this one in. Uh-oh. There's two ways we can do this. You can lay them flat and it'll print super quick because obviously it's doing it in layers, so there's less layers to do it. Sometimes this pays, but in this case, I'm going to show you the slow method because even though it's slow, the results are the same, you know what I mean? I'm going to show you the 90 degree method. So if we rotate this object on the Y, so that way, like that, 90 degrees up, what we can see is instead of gaining speed, we gain floor space, you know what I mean? And with this, you could do it in two prints, but at the same time, it's much better to do it in one print, you know what I mean? If you can, because you'd be using two sets of gloves, two sets of cleaning fluid, two, like, it's two amounts of time faffing around. You just want to do it once, you know what I mean? So I feel like this is probably the better option. So what we can do now is this, is we can really economize the space we're using. Got to reset that, and then we're going to probably... I feel like this, one, this one's okay being flat. It's, it's not really taking any real estate anyway, so we'll just bung that one over there. That's fine being flat. But with these ones, because they are like an odd size, and this is why you build your box in Blender, but... You could do them at a 45 degree angle, but at the same time, it's not, we, we probably are actually. It's so like this one, if we knock it into 45 like that, that's going to take up quite a bit of space as it is, you know what I mean? So if we move it, put it in the middle. So we need to make sure we don't create any suction, if that makes sense. So if you create suction, it's going to be an issue. And it's like, if we bring this model down here, I'll explain the suction. Can you see where it, before we get to the open part of that model, we're going to have this here and it's going to create a suction, which is an issue. It what not in the sense your model is going to fall off, but it's going to create like weird artifact lines kind of thing because it's like moving it essentially. So what I've been tempted to do in the past is lay the model flat. It's lay the model flat like this. So it actually, like, you don't need any supports and it sticks to the base. And it is, I've been tested it and up to about this size, you can get away with it. But if you don't, you have to create this solution and it, it you basically have to relieve that pressure. And with half of the build plate, I've discovered you need about three millimeters of air for it to get through. And you have a tool for that. It's this whole tool here. And what we can do is we can either increase it to three millimeters and just put one big whacking grate hole in. But what it's also, you can do is, is like put three one millimeter holes in but at the same time it doesn't work like that because with one millimeter of hole the resin can clog it up you know what i mean so what i find it's useful to do but at the same time you don't want to but if you're not bothered like if you're going to chuck some filler in it that's fine you need to basically put a, a hole that slightly digs into the floor as well to guarantee that when that layer after the base layer isn't going to create a suction you know what i mean if we inspect this closely, look, we can see we've get rid of that. We can see we've dug into the floor a little bit, can't we? There. And what that's going to do is allow for that not to just stick to it. But you get a horrible hole in it. You know what I mean? So what we do is basically undo that. Is we rotate it. They say like a good angle, like you can achieve optimal results at 30 degrees. But it's up to you. I'm going to try and choose not that one, a 90 degree angle because at all points we're going to have an open face. 
as not to create that suction, you know what I mean? And it's going to be actually kind of optimal for like how much space you're using on your bed. But the trouble with this is you're going to have to put supports on this bottom. And this I'd say is a display edge. So there's another choice you have to make. And that is basically if we whack it back to 45 is this base is our attachment point. You don't care if it gets damaged. And if you look, the overhang of that is like kind of like, ooh, you know what I mean? It might be worth coming down to say this much. Do you know what I mean? Maybe even 30. They say 30 is okay. And then what we can do is just put loads of supports on this bottom. But we run the risk of, we've got this little suction area here, don't we? We could put a hole in the bottom, which is a lot easier to fill. You could put some light resin in at the end. Or you can risk it for the biscuit. I've risked it for the biscuit many a time, and it's it's been okay. You know what I mean? But I just, it's going to save you a lot of time if you know this information, because it's took me, like, months to, like, figure out what these lines are, like this horrible artifact line and stuff is. So I'm going to go with my 30, 45 degree angle, I'm going to say, so that I don't have to use supports. No, I don't like the overhang of that. <laughs> I'm going to go for like 35 to like re keep that like decent. And then what we can do is basically go into supports with just that one selected. And what we can do is click platform only. Always see if the automatic ones will do a lot of the work for you first. And what we can see, it's not achieving what we want. Platform, it's thinking that these overhangs need support and it's not correct. That, those overhangs are fine, you don't need to worry about them. So then we'll try bottom only and it'll retry for you. And as we can see... <laughs> It doesn't compute. It thinks it's Hercules. So we can also try all. And still, it's not doing what we want. So if we remove them all, or if we just click bottom only, I think I've killed it. Don't worry. So I'm not happy with this. I, I love this program for this like little problem. It's, a, an, it's an enjoyable program. What we're going to do is we're going to lay this flat on its selected surface. We say, yeah, and get rid of it. And then lay it flat and it's on its base. I'm going to say, if you print it like that, it's going to be fine. But the problem you're going to have is, I don't think you're going to fit this other one on. If you select these three, like this, move them out, mate. See what I mean? You're not going to fit them both on. But that's that's not an issue. So what we need to do is obviously make all these a bit smaller, don't we? What we can basically do is select everything. One, two, three, four, five. Making sure when we look at scale, we're on the largest object, which we are. We can effectively just make it a little bit small. We discussed it in episode one, I think, that... A box that's over 100 mil is like, is, is excessive anyway. So if we just click 100, it'll make everything fit lovely. <laughs> May as well start the episode again. But these are the things you're going to come across, you know what I mean? So now we've got a lot more versatility, haven't we? We can really push that up there, push that up there. And I'm a big fan of just swatting them on the floor and not using supports, because supports... Although can keep your dimensional accuracy, they can re really be a pain in the bum sometimes, you know what I mean? This one is going to need support because that center section is higher than that, you know what I mean? So, But now we've basically got it laid on the floor, what we can do is select them both. Might as well. Supports keep dimensional accuracy. You've just got to counter the suction effect, you know what I mean? And select bottom only and it will do all the hard work for us. See what I mean? Because to put all those pegs in is going to be an absolute pain in the bum, you know what I mean? But for the first, like, this thickness here, when you're printing, typically your resin's cold and it's got to warm up, so, like, it changes and it deforms for that amount of section anyway. So to print directly flat on the surface, you never get good results. So if you can, you should always use support so that by the time it's got to this section here, all your resin's got to optimal temperature and it's, like, all consistent. That's what I find with supports and why I use them. But the auto supports are not always brilliant. So if you click this delete one here, you can go around, get rid of the ones that are going to affect the visible surfaces. What we need to also consider is with this one, we can go back to prepare and just click this one and go into supports. We need to think about using possibly platform only because it needs to catch that as well. So if we click platform only, it'll restart and do a fresh cut for you. If we roll it and then roll it back we can see it's done a lot better attempt at doing it can't we it's also got a lot of things wrong like that one that one that one that one and that one you just don't need it the structure of the thing you printed is strong enough to not need these like corner supports so if we get rid of them and then you go around and it's up to you if you want to risk it for the biscuit you can i'm a firm believer of machine guns and button bashing bang 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 you know what i mean <laughs> 
So basically just cover the bottom like you've seen the auto supports doing. Because this bit's non-seen and you can scrape them all off anyway, you know what I mean? It's called insurance. There's nothing more annoying than a print going wrong after an 11 hour print. Soul destroying, you know what I mean? And once you've done that, you've basically got all this area. I'm not worried about this area here. It's a very small area and there's going to be like a big chunk that's going to catch it, you know what I mean? So now we've done that, we're basically done our wheel, aren't we? What we can do now is arrange these around so that they'll fit as well. Let's push that one in any free going area. It'd be pretty cool if we can get these to fit. I think that one will go there. Push it back in. And this is like working with 90s as opposed to the 45s. I'm, you know what I mean? I'm not a fan. <laughs> Just make sure your wheel spoke as well is going to print correctly. You know what I mean? Make sure it's not. It may even be worth if we rotate the X. You know what I mean? Help it out. If it was like that, it'd have to print this bridge and it wouldn't be happy. So everything's at like a 45 degree angle. So that's groovy. This brake disc, probably going to have to rotate this that way and then move it in the front. So we've managed to get everything in in one print anyway. This is really good. You could even offer it a little bit of tilt if you wanted, but I feel like this is such a thin item. You don't really have to worry, you know what I mean? It's not bad. So obviously, we, if we select these three now, we need to add some supports to these, don't we? And we can safely say the bottom only, please. I'm pretty confident that this brake disc will print, but two, <laughs> I'd rather have more. You can go ahead, just add a couple, you know what I mean? Bang, bang, prop. I think that'll be fine. It'll be fine. And then, if it's going to put two on these, you may as well put some more on. You know what I mean? Help it out. Insurance. That'll be definitely okay. This wheel here, it's showing red all around here, so we may as well just give it a few, you know what I mean? Make it sturdy. And obviously this is a non-visible edge as well because we, apart from that there, it's going to catch that lip. So we'll delete that one there. Look. We don't want to, um, to exceed if we, if we don't have to, but we're going to have to there because this edge comes in first. If we look, look, that edge is coming in first. So we have to put one in there, which is there and it grows and then it will grow into this one anyway. So if we evenly place, like that, you could even put some light ones in, but my, I'm a firm, I'm showing you the machine gun tactic if you want to learn further <laughs> go for it but i feel like all these are okay because like the growing out of an existing strong structure you know what i mean as long as we've got a decent footprint that's like the same as the majority of it you know what i mean we're pretty good that should be okay i think so if we go back to prepare we've managed to get everything on just you know what i mean you can go in and you could move it if you want Probably worth budging there of it. It doesn't matter if you overlap the bases, it's just going to make them stronger. But that should be okay, I think. We now have our model ready for print. And that's pretty much your program, really. Annihilate it to the bottom. You're going to get a suction issue on that. It's probably worth putting that hole in. We should be able to do it. I don't know. you probably got to do it after the fact. If we put a hole in it, yeah, it's going to ruin the spots, but it's not an issue. I would honestly recommend putting a hole in. It's very easy to fill it. Put a piece of tape on the bottom, pour some resin in, use a UV light, and it just hardens off, you know what I mean? It's fine. You, you're probably going to be spraying these things anyway. So yeah, you know what I mean? Personally, I'd risk it for the biscuit, but I've got so much PTSD of light, artifact light, just issues, because you need this distance to warm up your resin, you know what I mean? That's the main reason we're using supports. Yeah? So what we need to do is, you need to... You don't have to... But you need to inspect the resin that you're using. You might have ABS, you might have water wash kind of thing. I'm using ABS, but I like to use the water wash settings. You basically create your own settings and parameters in here so that when you press slice, it will pre-program up this box here, basically, which is the main thing, your initial exposure, where for the first three layers, it's going to get 40 seconds and then every layer after that is going to get three seconds because like your first three layers need like really gunning onto the pad so it sticks yeah and it also is going to warm up your resin as well that screen being turned on warms it up and then you get your rising height which is 
generally set at default you don't really need to change that but if you have issues with like resin being stingy with your resin you need time for it to run back in you'd raise it higher so it's got more time for the resin but i run a full vat all the time the motor speed if you can change it you can change it. i think mine's fixed i can't really adjust this it don't really change anything the light off delay is to do with how long it, it waits before it puts the next image on the screen as to let your screen cool down therefore helping it live longer you know what i mean but if you're impatient as we can see we've got an eight hour print here i could whack it down to like one or zero and you'd save two hours but you know what i mean you're already waiting a long time anyway i usually put it on before bedtime so it's fine for me i like me 16 hours sleep you know what i mean so it's fine for me <laughs> And then, obviously, you got your bottom layer count. I usually stick with three, never had an issue. Once you've done all this, we can finally, first, is inspect your model. I'm confident because we're using just blobs, you know what I mean? Big chunks of resin. Just inspect it, you know what I mean? Make sure everything's correct, because sometimes your model might be weird and it'll do something funny. We've luckily got away with it. What we can do now is press save, and then you export it out, and it'll come out like this. What I like to do is, like, put the name of the object... Whereas I did a two-part one on that one. Whereas this one, we've done it all in one. Yeah? So what we'll call it is the wheel box. I don't know. Wheel box. Subscribe. <laughs> and then what I always like to do is make sure this is a hot tip, actually. Do your underscore. Always put the weight of the model. This is going to be 123 grams. And then also put the time. It says 8. 8 hours 20, so I'm going to just put 9 hours, not I mean. Round them off, make it easy. So all this information is very handy when, you, when you're plugging it into your printer and you're like, oh, how much resin do I need? You know what I mean? It's very handy information to see that. So if you then press save, you, you can find it will take a very, very long time. Don't be afraid. There's a little yellow bar at the bottom. It tells you how long it's taken. But as janky as this program can be, it's consistent. It has one job, and that is to slice my objects. If you give it perfect objects, it will slice it. The only issue you're going to have with this program is if your models are broken, you know what I mean? It does work. I'm very happy with it. They say use Chichu Box, but I feel like my 3D modeling skills are good enough that I don't need these like fancy tools and stuff. All I need to do is bang a hole in it or hollow things out, you know what I mean? And even then, I'd much rather hollow things out in on Blender because I can like get... I don't know, I'm not really printing like figures, solid objects. I'm printing stuff like this, you know what I mean? Meccano kind of things, you know I, mean? I like Lego-y stuff. I can click together and make joints and stuff. Because I'll tell you now, you'll print this out and you'll start clicking stuff together. And every time you change the size of things, like your fitment will change. So you have to do a test print and then do an assessment, you know, like your prototype. And you'll print your prototype and I'll show you. I waffled a bit too much then. So once it's saved, you can basically bang it on a data stick. And I think I've got to get my actual video camera out to do this next bit. Probably going to have to have go in the shower. Oh. I'm going to have to tidy my house up to do this next bit. Oh, Jesus. So, <coughs> oh, I hate filming a camera. So, get your data stick. Mine's a cool cat one. It seems to only like really crappy old data sticks I've found, these things. And uh, once you've got your data stick, come to your 3D print room. This is my room. I've got a spare room. <coughs> I fell over. And I've kitted myself out with... 3D printer, water wash, and one of them crap ones that nobody likes anymore. And basically what I like to do, top tip, is put your data stick in first and then turn it on, yeah? Ah, it's cheap and it's basic, so you've got to treat it that way. I like to have a thermometer. If it's, if it's below 20, I'll do something about it, you know what I mean? At the minute, summer, You gotta love the cheap, noisy. Ugh. Shush! There we go. China. So, what you traditionally do is you'd have your data stick in there and you press print. Oh, it's sticky. <laughs> and then you'd like, you'd basically click whatever you want and press play. So if we say, click this one, we can see 
I've got a previous, this is actually a previous model I've done and you press play and I can fast forward basically and show you that right now. So if we, li we lift the lid up and zoom out, and basically I can show you one that's already been done. Now you'll be looking at it thinking, it looks a bit broke mate, <laughs> and it's been in here probably now for about a week, two weeks. What happens is with these 3D printers is it's quite interesting and you need to know this. Basically, with these data sticks, it needs to be FAT32. You know, when you format it, they need to be FAT32. They can't be that NTFC or something like that. So you can only buy the cheapest. And with the cheapest, if you read the specs, these data sticks can only be read and written, say, 10,000 times. Now you think, oh, that's plenty, that is. If you're going to store some on it and keep it for the rest of your life, that's, that's fine, you know what I mean? But with 3D printing, you've got to think it's put in like... The, that file probably is like 1700 layers of images. So this data stick's got to be read and written 1700 times, you know what I mean? So after like 10 or 20 prints, you're probably going to kill your data sticks, you know what I mean? And I do believe this data stick died on that print and that's why it's like missing the rest of it kind of thing. It's tragic, but at the same time, it's going to happen. And if you notice it when you're plugging it in your PC and it's like, you know what I mean? You're unplugging it, plugging it, plugging it. Don't even bother printing it back in that bit in your printer because it's going to fail. You know what I mean? It's basically dead. So buy the cheapest. I think I get like three packs for like 15 quid or something. They don't need to be big. You know what I mean? Hot tip then. But I can show you a finished product. Shall we have a look? Let me go, let me go and fetch one. I team for days. So then, I can show you an example of this. Once you've basically cleaned them up and done your cure and stuff, which is another video in itself, you'll have something that looks like this. This is a different design, but exactly the same principle. I've put some objects around so it like give you reference. This is a 100mm, the, the same as we've rendered out, and this one's an 85mm. And I found like the 85mm, I could get it all on the board in like really easily. But at the same time, it, I went back to the 100mm just, you know, for like value's sake, you know what I mean? It's more useful if it's that little bit bigger. But I could never get good uh, paint. I wasn't happy with the bronze, so I've like got some gold now, you know what I mean? These are just prototypes. But obviously when your data stick dies and you buy these cheap data sticks, you have to wait like a month for them to arrive, you know what I mean? So I think that would cover it, would it not? Yeah, if uh, I'll, do, I'll, do, I'll do a 3D printing one just for the sakes of like wrapping up this series, but I do believe this is like the end of this series and uh, it has taken me a very long time to like chip away and make this video. And if um, you've enjoyed it, I would really appreciate like a like on my video and uh, subscribe, you know what I mean? I'll, I'll be making more videos, I always do. I love this stuff, so yeah, I feel like I could roll an advert right now. Hmm. Everybody we asked agreed. Yeah, you I agree, man. I agree. I agree. Brother, I agree with you. I agree. Well, your customs makes the sickest, trickiest boxes ever to grace Mother Earth. Store things like the squirrel you yearn to be. Well, your customs, baby. The <laughs> you didn't know you needed. Well, your customs. If you want to make all kinds of weird stuff, check out my channel. Did he just call us weird? That's totally not cool, bro. That <laughs> hurts my feelings. Hey, Gavron, we have a problem here? Yeah, these little samosas watching need to like and subscribe so I don't feel stupid with no friends. <laughs>